Gather, ye children. Start a small fire around your computer and roast a delightful treat as you hear my tale. Much like a Tolkien-esque adventure, I am going to start at the end. Picture in your mind's eye a storybook slowly getting closer, the pages magically opening to one perfect moment. But you're not, you're not part of the solution, uh, Mr. Mr. Carlson. You're part of the problem, actually. You're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. Why don't you go f yourself, you tiny brain, and I hope this gets picked up, because you're a moron. So first we have Tucker Carlson, the Tuck Man. Tucky Tum Tums. Completely losing dignity and control after Dutch historian Rucker Bregman points out that Tux is an obvious and terrible liar who scapegoats immigrants for billionaires. Then, one month later, this happened. She seems like a. She seems awful. Yeah, she they're, is they're awful. Very, they're very. Tea. She seems extremely. I don't hear that word out of. Oh yeah, I just I stepped over me. He, she seems what? Now go ahead. She just does seem a little. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you said it. I'm just agreeing with you. I, would, I don't use that word because. Right, I'd love for. That's from a clip you've no doubt seen from Media Matters, who resurfaced a series of crude interviews between Tucks and an adult human man called Bubba the Love Sponge, where Tucker defends a rapist as well as makes a long list of racist and sexist comments he seems to think are funny. He also talks like a predator about a teenage beauty pageant contestant and suggests that adult men f***ing girls is probably bad, but adult women f***ing boys doesn't count as rape and is good, actually. It's quite possible even more things like this will come out by the time this video is released, but the audio all adds up to a deeply unserious and toxic depiction that forced the T-Dog Snarlson to give an impassioned anti-internet mob retort on his own show. The great American outrage machine is a remarkable thing. There's really not that much you can do to respond. It's pointless to try to explain how the words were spoken in jest or taken out of context or in any case bear no resemblance to what you actually think or would want for the country. You must pretend this is a debate about virtue and not about power. That your critics are arguing from principle and not from partisanship. Why are the people who considered Bill Clinton a hero lecturing me about sexism? We've always apologized when we're wrong and we'll continue to do that. So firstly, I've always considered Bill Clinton a rapist. Bill Clinton, rapist. Secondly, it's pretty fun that Carlson accuses his critics of pretending to argue about principle instead of partisanship. The idea being that internet outrage culture is secretly about faking a moral stance in order to attack your political enemies. Because this is clearly something that Tucker Carlson would never do and certainly hasn't built his entire television persona around. I've worked in newsrooms my whole life, but that one word that she used, I don't know any man who uses that word. No. Well, Tucker, it turns out you know at least two men that use that word. But hold on, you say. His comments were a whole half a decade ago. Surely we can't attack this man for some naughty things he once said. Otherwise, we're no better than the people who went after the likes of James Gunn or Dan Harmon. Even the head of Media Matters was discovered to have some old blog posts that he claims to be satire, and those are... Yeah. But Libs, I mean, do you want everyone fired for everything they've ever said? And here's the thing about all that. Shut up about all that. Because anyone disingenuously using that argument is ignoring the fact that nothing from these Media Matters clips is different from anything that Tucker Carlson says on his show right now. It's just wrapped up in a less vulgar package. Tucker claims it's pointless to try to explain how the words were spoken in jest or taken out of context, or in any case, bear no resemblance to what you actually think or would want for the country. Tucker, you say this stuff all the time. Even the stuff about female teachers f***ing their students and shit. He says that, like, as recently as slightly more than a year ago. A news anchor who reports current events and his opinions to three million people who want his opinions, talked about how Iraqis are semi-literate primitive monkeys. Side note, Tucker, before the Iraq war, Iraq's literacy rate was higher than some US states. You racist. He's on state TV talking about immigration and foreign policy. And to act like any of this is somehow removed from the context of his career is just, it's just not worth anyone's time or at least any more time than I've already spent on it, which was too much time. So enough about what he has said. Let's talk about what he does. 
we're going to break down just one of his segments about those aforementioned immigrants to see just how totally not terrible he is. Just one segment, I swear. For Democrats, it's understandable because the calculus is simple. Having abandoned the concerns of the middle class here, they need millions of new voters and they need them fast. Otherwise, their party risks becoming a permanent minority. Replacing ungrateful citizens with obedient immigrants is their only hope. At exactly one minute into the video, Tuckums has claimed that the Democrats' only motivation for supporting DACA, or the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, is that more immigrants get them more voters. He offers absolutely nothing as evidence, so a reasonable person might assume that the rest of the video is designed to support it. You know, like, like if you started a video by saying a specific person should eat poop, you would then need to spend the rest of your video explaining why, which I still intend to do. But Tucker never intends to explain why. He's essentially starting with a speculative conclusion that's laughable on its face, and then just moving on, as if it's now true. So, okay, Tucker, what is the next, uh, fact for us? Every Democrat who's thought it through for even a minute knows this well. They can't say it in public, though, because obviously it's horrible. So instead, they're trying a new talking point. Illegal immigrants are terrific people, every single one of them, far more noble and law-abiding than you are. How dare you complain about their presence? You must be a bigot. The one problem with this line of argument is that it's vulnerable to facts. Now we're nearing minute two, and Tucky Tumsbo claims that Democrats and liberals will scream bigot at anyone who disagrees with immigration, despite the cold hard facts saying that immigrants cause more crimes. He then cites a study seemingly proving just that. In the border state of Arizona, for example, illegal immigrants commit two and a half times as many murders as American citizens do. They're almost 50% more likely to be in gangs. They commit more than armed robbery and more sex crimes against children. Overall, they're about twice as likely to be convicted of crimes of all kinds, non-immigration related. And that's just in one state. So John Lott, who's a researcher, a social scientist, got a hold of the conviction numbers, which the government of the state of Arizona has hidden from the population, because it's lying to the population about the effects of immigration, as you know. Now, if the name John Lott sounds familiar, that's because we literally just did a video debunking his study. This study that Tucky Carbo is citing, which is inaccurate, and made by a weird fraud who peer reviews his own work, which is largely created for conservative talking points, and there's a bunch of other studies that have shown immigrants to be equally, if not less, prone to crime as the rest of America. But again, I literally just did that already. So go watch that other video I did. It's fantastic. The main takeaway here is the study that Tuck Everlasting is referring to is bad and wrong and it's going to be the entire foundation of his segment. And this is mostly how he operates. He starts with a bold lie or inaccuracy that his audience doesn't have the time or desire to fact check or learn the nuance of, and then he builds a bigger lie from that. It's like a magician saying there's nothing up his sleeve and the audience thinking, okay, magician, I trust you, magician. Whatever you say, magician. In California, an illegal alien named Luis Brasamantes murdered two police officers. So next, he immediately follows up his wrongness with a single story about the worst immigrant criminal he can find, using it to ramp up anger via anecdotal evidence while ignoring literally everything he previously said about the importance of facts. He then establishes the idea that liberals are letting these immigration crimes happen because of a foolish and emotional idea that diversity is our strength. Except. I thought it was because of the votes, Tucker. What the f Tucker? Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Here's the evergreen end plate to ask you to like and subscribe. It's any day of the year where you are.